This episode takes place where we left off in the top of WA, just north of Broome at James Price Point. We'll be making our way east, camping along a couple of spots given to us by locals on the Fitzroy River. So come with us because in this episode we'll be showcasing everyday life off the grid. There will be some amazing scenery, boating and croc territory and of course the fishing for the elusive barramundi. Morning our Koto. good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Hey guys. We are very sadly departing Broome. <laughs> well sad to leave Broome, not sad to leave a caravan park full as that one was. Yeah that one was chocker but uh, the kids made heaps of friends, they really didn't want to leave this time round. Yeah, it was good eh guys? Yeah we've loved the Broome community, it's just a really vibrant and place is just fantastic so yeah we'll miss it and we hope to return soon but onwards to the next chapter yeah we're just going to um, visit a camp tonight eh, for a few days we don't know how long we're going to stay there yeah uh, we've got a locals tip for a place for good fishing at a barrage so we're going to head in there for maybe a week and then uh, from there we'll be basically starting the Gibb River Road which for those not travelling Australia and perhaps watching from their lounge or back in New Zealand that is um, basically from Broome or Derby all the way across to close to Kununurra which is um, where the Western, Western Australia Northern Territory border is. So yeah at this stage it's all gravel, we did it in 2019, it's probably one of the most super remotest parts of Australia other than Arnhem Land and um, yeah it's really well travelled with tourists along the main route but um, we like to try and go off off the beaten track a little bit so we'll see where we end up this time. Just having a quick break by the side of the road beside this big Boab tree. We see them all through the Kimberleys, quite iconic um, of this area. This was a cool one. How's that for a dicky gate? I just had to lean it back up. <laughs> We've had a local, local tip off for this area. It wasn't on wiki camps or anything. So I'm just going to have a read here, make sure we're in the right place. Welcome to Dambel Cordon. Let's go see what we can find. It's got Tony on the back. got some strange rattle going on and he's just trying to ascertain what the rattle is. So he's literally standing on the drawbar so I drive down the track. I said to him how will I know if you fall off and he said you'll go over a big bump and you'll hear me yell. <laughs> I was like yeah well. <laughs> okay? Bump. Just about got him. <laughs> Hi. Have you found it? What do you think might be the drums like last time? I don't know. Don't know? I'll drive if you like. Yeah, yeah it's, it's something in that um, hub. Something in the hub. Do you remember last time we finished the gig? We had noise too and it was the drums. Yeah. yeah. I'm not 
and around here guys, lots of crops here, okay? We're just going to have a look where we are, we just pulled up to the river, see what we can see, and then maybe we can find a spot. Oh, he's a croc. There he goes. Hmm. I'm going to do a time lapse, see if it works. Not very good at doing a time lapse on the GoPro, but the setup. Let's have a look. That's us. We are set up. It wasn't too bad of a set up, was it, honey? That was awesome. Yeah. Good set up. Good set up. We're going to have a fire tonight. There's plenty of firewood around here. You can see a fish just there, huh? Yeah. And yeah, we'll head down and see what we can find down the riverbed. Being very careful of crocs, of course. And stuff with Hunter as he woke up this morning, doing a little bit of computer work. Kitchens needs tidying up from breakfast. The kids are in playing Lego games. Good morning. Hi. Lego games. Lego games this morning, and I'm not sure. I think Tony's around here somewhere. Where are you? Is Tony? What are you up to, huh? Oh, I we were coming in yesterday. I heard some rattling coming out of this hub so I just want to pull this hub apart and see what's see what's not right in there. I feel like we've been here before. Yeah we have with the same <laughs> wheel too so anyway I'd say something's just come apart in the inside the drum for the brake system so hopefully it's not a major albeit we're not far away from town so it's all good we're only 
half a day's drive. From... I remember the last yeah. time we had this problem, if it's the same thing with this hub, with the drum brake. What was it? The brakes? Oh, yeah, the brakes disintegrated inside the drum. We were pretty much this side of Derby as well. Yeah, <laughs> now we're on the other side of Derby. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. it's all good. We'll have a look. Does anyone see my sunglasses? Whoa, sorry. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We've just woken up at our little spot, and uh, Tony's just put a little soft plastic prawn, is it, on yeah. my rod. And uh, just gonna go down for a little bit of a fish. I'm seeing some big fish, I don't know what they are, move through. I don't know if I'll be able to get down to the water's edge. It's crystal clear and quite shallow. So, um, but yeah, I can't just sit up here on the bank and watch it. I've got to go and at least try to be part of the action. Um, we're just having a bit of a chuckle because Tony suggested in Croc Territory that I wear a knife, um, but I don't have a belt. So I'm going to put a webbing thing on and use maybe a fish knife because uh, it's all I've got. So, but yeah, better to be safety first. There you go, makeshift Kiwi Dundee. Eat your heart out. I change your plan. You can actually see a croc on the beach. He's about 200 meters ahead of me. I'm just gonna quietly wander up this way and see if I can get a little bit closer to him from the bank, obviously, just to show you guys. Um, yeah, he's just crawled up right onto the beach where we'll be launching later. So I'll go down there first and then I'll, then I'll hit the track later. I'm just going to be really quiet because I don't want to disturb him. It can be really flighty. I imagine they are here in areas that are camped. Hmm. Big herd of cattle ahead of me, I don't love that. Hopefully they're not interested in me. Oh, he's just slid into the water. Darn it. I'm gonna see if I can get some footage. Sorry about that guys, I didn't manage to get a close up, but hopefully a you got to see that he he was there. I think if we're quiet today, this latter part of the morning, they'll probably want to come out and warm their warm their blood up on this side of the beach. So we might see them again, depending on how rowdy the kids get. Anyway, we'll go back to the fishing plan for now. shallow. I might get the boat out later but I might just go for a walk up to the riverbanks and see if I can find something that's um, a bit steeper into the into the edge of the river.
And that's the reality when fishing in trees, especially for an amateur fisher like me. When it comes to barra fishing and snags, I lose a lot of gear. <laughs> Let's go back and see how Tony's getting on with the drum brakes. It lands in the driver's seat. What's going on here? What are you up to, young man? I'm helping Daddy talk. He, he tells me to put my f foot on the brake and not to because something's not right in the back right wheel. How are we getting on? Uh, we found one problem, but there was a um, short on this wire uh, that got crushed in between here. But this is this is a magnet that sticks to the inside of the hub, and when you touch your brakes, it sends electrical current through for the magnet to work and stick onto there before it activates your shoes. But um, but I haven't I fixed the wire, but I still haven't got, still got no, no still not magnet, working. no magnet working. So yeah, I'm just trying to find out if I've got power supply in there, so that I can work out whether I've got to replace that or what the story is. So do you think it's the magnet that was making the noise? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This this thing here, this thing here. If that magnet, see, it's all engages. Loose. If it engages, and it wouldn't rattle, is that right? Well, yeah. I just don't know. I wouldn't think it engages until you um, you apply pressure on the brake. But um, it just feels all a bit loose and sloppy, and that's the noise we can hear that rattle. Mm. So I'm picking. There used to be a spring from the back of there, maybe to over here. But, um, could you take the other one apart to compare? Oh, I could, but it's not as easy as this one because it's inside the tent. Mm. So I've got to oh, yeah. fold the tent up. That's not fun. Nah. Shit, he's a big boy. Yeah. Don't you turn the motor off. Hey, is enormous. Bigger than our tinny. For sure. Look at his mountain mm, Don't get too close, honey. Stop now. I can't see him now. Okay, okay, Tony, that's. Way too close. I do, but holy moly, if he goes. Man, he's enormous. If you nudge in to like turn around and nudge just so we can keep going, I'll be more comfortable. He's up higher than I thought he'd be too. Yeah, it's what Dad said. Alright, so chicken your round. I'm just gonna pop that into the spitting at me. Pan looking good. Looking good there, Liam. And we'll pop the veggies in. Yeah. 
Clear that through. Make sure you get it all out. I can feel one on the bottom. Trying not to use more dishes because yeah. we're really tight on water. So we just use whatever we're cooking with. Pour that over top. And it's looking good. Just hold it up a bit there, Liam. Wish you guys had smell cam because it smells delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Mm. I think we've had this before. We have. We've had it lots before at home. Right, and we'll put the lid on. And Liam will carry it over. Chuck it on the fire. Don't drop it. I try not to. <laughs> hey Dad, where's the best spot? Straight on top of those flames, mate. Just hold it over there. <laughs> Just pop it on the pop it on the grate. Pop it there, mate. Nice one. And we'll check that in about an hour. Oh, that looks pretty good. Looks ready. Cool. Is peace done? Yeah, that'll be fine. Do you want to give it a stir first? Yeah. Take it down about. Go and get a chair, huh? Here, okay. Okay, this looks good. Bon appetit. I'll do this one too. Kids have got pasta in theirs, but Tony and I don't need the pasta. Yum, yum. yum. Goodbye, Fitzroy River. Yeah. That was a great camp. We ended up staying for five nights, and slow life here was really, really good. We've all really enjoyed this spot. Um, nice surprise this morning. We got stopped and checked by fishery officers. Um, which is so cool. We always see them out in real remote areas. Um, two hell of a nice guys. And uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I used to be a fisheries officer in New Zealand. So yeah, it's always really awesome to chew the fat and talk a few stories and yeah, just talk about what their, who their main offenders are and what their main issues are in a region. So yeah, that was really cool. Next stop, Camp Allen. Uh, we're going to head to the barrage and see if we can catch some some barra there. Cambellan Barrage. So we've got the big old uh, ah! ruins. We've got a couple of big snapping handbags sitting on the far sandbar over there, if you can see them. And 
and uh, fishing's been to be good here. This is going to be where we can have a bath or a swim. Just here in the corner. On the safe side of the concrete wall. Bit of an overflow down here. So we can hop in there. Of course we don't want to hop on the other side. Crocodilly that are fond of just hanging about. Hey guys, just launching our boat here at uh, the barrage. Um, it's one of the more challenging places to launch a boat. I've just backed the, the boat down to where it is now, put some blocks behind it and put the winch on uh, the front of the drawbar and I'm going to try and lower it down the steep hill and then we've got some big rocks to get over at the other end and then we're really shallow in that little um, causeway into Snake Creek before we can get into some deep water so there's crocs everywhere I can see four or five from here over on the sand so hopefully there's none right here Let's give it a go, eh, guys? Right, this is going to be interesting. in part, my foot's on the brake and the handbrake is on. guys will have a better view from me but I'm guessing that the rear wheels of the trailer are <laughs> Winch, which is brilliant for this. We got it down this far in one piece, so it was good. Um, I'll get you guys just to hold on the back, I'll lift up, and yep. just lower it back into here as much as we can, and then um, and then Liam, I'll get you to let off the front rope and then I'll get behind it and pull it out there. Now that is how crows do it.
we're just heading down for a wash at the barrage. Liam and Tony are down there having a flick. First proper night here. couple of biggies down here, here's another biggie yeah. they get a lot bigger than that around here they reckon but those are good size freshwater prawns be good, be good bait for some barra tomorrow fingers crossed fingers crossed, yeah When we're out free camping like we are at the moment, we're at, down at the Campbellum Barrage, obviously we're in a camper trailer and we don't have a wash machine. So how do we get on? Uh, well, I have in the past plenty of times just hand washed what we needed, um, but mum sent us, gave us this little gadget before we left New Zealand um, and I'm gonna try it out today. And I've just plugged it in and it looks really cool. So let me show you it. So here it is, it's just connected to our USB. And here it is here. And when we turn it on, it's just a little agitator. So just agitates up the water and every 10 or 20 seconds or so, it spins the other direction. So yeah, as you can see, I've got some of the kids' undies here and we're just gonna pop it all into the water. I'm just gonna add a little bit of warm water uh, just so we've got more volume there. And yay, hopefully you don't have to do any scrubbing of anyone else's undies. Bonus for mum. Hi, today we're making bran biscuits. Um, mum sort of made up the recipe. Should be good, and we're gonna try cooking it on the Weber. Just hooked it up to the gas, just turned it on, and we're just gonna put the trivets from inside the our camp oven on just so it holds our foil tray up a little bit, and hopefully that will help the bottom of the biscuits not burn. So it's total trial and error today. So we're finished with the mix, tastes pretty good. I'm gonna roll it into balls. And then, I'm going to dip it into some Sultana Bram. Now the reason we are even making biscuits is because we've got all this Sultana Bram that went slightly soft and the kids won't eat it. And I don't want to see it go to waste. So that's why we're creating magic today. It's the production line going, rolling into balls. Summer is dipping into the cornflakes. And we're popping them on the tray. It's time to put the biscuits on. Just thought I'd show you the view. It's three snapping handbags down on the riverbank there. And I'll show you the biscuits. They're wrapped in bran. And they're ready to go on. They come down here, Summer. Open it up. Oh, she's hot, so be careful not to touch her. Just sit it on top. Yep, sit it straight on top. And that's us. Let's give it eight minutes, I reckon. So there's our biscuits. We'll do a taste test soon, but we'll get the other batch in. Okay, let's have a look. Actually, tongs would be easier. Yeah, they're not burnt, they're just brown on the bottom. So we have to flip them, which 
I'm guessing we're really tough in the mark, but they're not going to be light and fluffy. But hopefully they still taste good. Don't hit them, guys. Oh, thank you, darling. Swap them out. Take these ones. Cute. That's better. All right, let's do another two minutes on this side, okay? I'm just going to have a taste test. Can I have a taste mm. test? Yes, you get a taste test too. Just wait a minute. What do you think? They're good. I like them. They're certainly not light and fluffy, but they're still really soft and moist in the middle. Yeah, pretty sure the kids will eat these. Squaw. Dad just caught a fish. It's a bear. It's a big bear. He says. I saw it, uh, just dropped it, mate. It would have been. It was about that big. I saw it just here. At least you've got your paint still, though. He's not looking too good, though, is he? No. That was a good bear, mate. That was a good Close. Tony's out fishing again, and I've got the damper on early today. Just wanted it to rise while it was a bit hotter in the day. Because uh, the last one didn't rise all that well, and my yeast is getting a bit old. Greens are blooming hot. Got a good bear, good bear dragging the boat around. Got two live baits, with three rods out. Not catching a thing on live bait. So I thought I'd just. Oh, beautiful fish. Come to the boat. I'm on my own. It's a beautiful fish. Not ideal having three rods in the water. Eight hundred. Yes, I'm stoked. <sighs> Tony's just radioed and said I need to meet him down the ramp. It's probably for nothing, but I'm hoping it's because he's got a fish. <laughs> One can hope. It's probably to help him carry some gear up, knowing him. Here he comes. Out, nothing, and then I thought oh, I'll just flick a lure, flick the lure twice. He was right in that front of that hole, bang, just came up bumper. Awesome, 
so cool. Really? Liam! Oh, Kids, come yeah. see! Come see! It's a bear, right? It's a huge bear. It's a good bear, right? What? You reckon? You could get a feed out of that. Don't take like eight weeks to eat. <laughs> half loaf to have as a side with dinner which we're having um, beer battered barramundi for tea beer battering the barra that's good Tony and some dough boys and some dough boys and what do we got over here well oh, the finished product finished, finished product. product be enough there for about six meals the kids are going to have them in fish tacos because that's their favorite eh yeah <laughs> Stick around for the next episode because we hit the gib. We explore Tunnel Creek, Winjana Gorge and Bell Gorge. We'll catch you then.